Hey everybody, Brent Johnson here with Heartfeel Automation. This week I'm going to begin a new tutorial series on how we go ahead making an Acapo, a B&R Acapost track in Automation Studio. And we're going to go ahead and actually simulate it. The Acapost track is the baby brother to the Super Track. What's really awesome about this product line is the fact that you can make any shape that you want. You're not just stuck to that racetrack oval. Another nice feature of it is the full electronic merging capabilities. You actually weaken one side, one set of coils on the of the track side, and you strengthen the other side, and you can automatically merge from one side, one track to another track. It's a super powerful product line that BNR has as a as in their offering, and we're gonna get into how we go ahead and start building a project with this. All right, so this is actually the finished project that we're gonna actually be building from scratch here. We're gonna just make a simple racetrack system, kind of similar to the super track that we did a while back. This is a little bit different. There's more segments that we're gonna have. We're using a little, we're using a different controller and we're also gonna be able to stream this onto scene viewer. So I actually got this simulation running right here, but in the end, this is what we're gonna have. We're gonna have a working simulation and we're going to actually have a working program that we could actually put on real hardware. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we are going to create a new project. I'm going to go over here and click on new project and then click on an empty project. And we're going to name this my first Acapos track. And then the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to click on next and then we're going to do the controller that we're planning on using, which is the X20CP1586. This is a little bit higher end controller, more so than that compact desk that we've done a lot of videos on. Go ahead and click next. And then we're gonna actually search for that controller. So X20CP1586, go ahead and click on that and hit finish. Okay. We're all set here. So now the next thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and just create a couple of programs real quickly. So come on over here and click on the program and we're gonna add a couple of structured text programs. So just double click on the first one and then double click on it again. We're gonna rename these programs. The first one, we're gonna rename that to start movement. And then the second one's just gonna be viz. Go ahead and hit save all. Then we're gonna go over to our configuration view. We're gonna add some objects under map motion. So explode the X20CP1586, go to map motion and hit the plus sign, or just ho hover over it. Then come over to your toolbox, click on map track. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down here, mechatronic designs and double click on this track oval. And then you can see that that object was added in here. And then we're going to add one more one more object here. We're going to go ahead and click on map track again. And we're going to just make sure we're highlighted over the map motion. And we're going to add this assembly feature right here. So double click on it. And then you can see that it added it right there. Go ahead and save all. One other thing I want to add is a library. So come back over to logical view and then come over here and click on library and then open up BNR libraries. And we're going to go do the ARSBRSTR, this one right here, ASBRSTR. So go ahead and highlight over it and, and hit finish. And then that gets added in the project as well. Now we're going to go to the physical view. We're going to add some hardware. First thing we're going to add is a an X20. So go over here. We're going to click on power link. Type in X20 BC8083. And then double click that. And you can see that it got added in there. And the next thing we're going to add is some hubs. So X20 H, oops, HB. 2880. We're going to add two of these. So go ahead and just left click it, drag it, and put it right there. 
We're going to come over here and we're going to add another hub module. We'll go to the second slot here. Go ahead and hit save all. And then we're going to also add some stuff onto this X2X plane. So go back, X off of here. And what we're going to search for is an 80. Or search, first off, an X20BT9400. Add that on. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to search for an 80PS. And it's this guy right here, the ADPS 080X3.10-01. Gonna double click on it. And we're gonna double click on another one. We're gonna have two of those. Go ahead and hit save all. And then what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna move these up, just kind of a little bit out of the way here, kind of up here. Move this up here. Okay, we're going to start adding track components. So let's go ahead and make sure you're highlighted on PowerLink. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on, we're going to come down here and we're going to click on Octopus Track. And we're going to add some segments. We're going to add 16 segments. So go ahead and just left click it and drag it over. And we're going to do three of these. So I got one in here. I'm just going to copy and paste, Control C, Control V. Two, three, four, five. And then I'm just going to delete these for now. So we got six of these. So what we're going to do is we're going to put two of them together like that, three of them together like that. We're gonna go here, left click on it. We're just gonna rotate this 180 degrees. Rotate this 180 degrees. I'm gonna kinda line that up like that. Like that. And we're gonna do one more control V. Just delete this for now. Rotate it 180 degrees. If I can get it there, there we go. And then we're gonna add one of these. I'm gonna rotate this 180. And then I'm gonna control C again, control C and hit control V. And just delete this connection for now. I'm gonna move this guy right here. And this guy right, whoops, right there. And then we're going to do another one of these, just left click and drag it. I'm going to rotate this 180. And I'm going to say Control C, Control V. Delete this for now. I'm going to put this guy right there. This guy right here. And then we're going to take three of these i'm going to get six of these guys so one control c control v two control v three control four v four delete that for now control v five control v six. Delete that for now. So now we're going to rotate this kind of like that right there. Kind of just get as close as possible. It doesn't have to be exact. Rotate this 90. Put that guy right there. Rotate this uh, something like this. See, I'm kind of moving everything down now. Again, it doesn't have to be exact. I like to, just for show, I want it to look kind of nice here. Kind of gives you a rough idea what it looks like there. 
And then what we're going to do is we're going to take these guys over here. I get it right in there. Rotate this guy about 90. There. Rotate this guy. Kind of like that. And as you can see, they're all unconnected right now. We're going to go ahead and we're going to rename these um, in our next video here. But that's kind of what I wanted to show you this week. We've got all of our hardware components added in the system right now. One other thing we can go ahead and do before we end here, let's go back to our logical view. Let's go ahead and, or actually let's first, let's go ahead and click on our CPU right up here. Just right click on it and hit software. And you can see that these two cyclics or programs are in cyclic four. Let's just go ahead and left click it and drag it up to cyclic one. Same with the viz. And then we're going to do one other configuration on there. I'm going to hit save. We're going to right click on it and hit configuration. We're going to just set the timing real quickly here. So go ahead, go on down. First, let's click on simulation. Let's turn that on. And then we're going to go down here. We're going to go to timing. And we're going to do this instead of the CPU timer, we're going to do EPL forward slash X2X interface. Choose the interface. I'm going to do IF3, the X20CP1586.IF3. And then what we want to do is we want to go down to, we want to go ahead and hit save all real quickly. Then we want to go to our power link. Hit configuration. And we're going to go down to the timing, cyclic time right here. We're going to change this from 2000 to 800. Go ahead and hit save. Go back to here. You'll see it, it automatically changed it to 800. We're going to come down to resources and we're going to click on cyclic task classes. We're going to click on cyclic one. We're going to change the duration from 9600 to 800. We're going to change the toler tolerance to zero. And we're going to change the output delay, the IO output delay, to end of cycle. Oops. Go ahead and hit save all. And then we'll change our cyclic task class 2 from 2000 to 800 as well. Or to 6, yeah, 800. Change the tolerance to 0. And we're going to change it to end delay. Just leave that on no delay for now. And that's all I wanted to show you right now. Let's uh, hop into the rest of this next week. Thanks so much for watching this week, everyone. I hope it was an informative video. Next week, we'll get into more of this programming of this Acapulco track. It's going to be a really great session. If you like these videos, go ahead and hit subscribe. I've got a lot of other great content related to the BNR product line. I think it will be useful for any type of projects that you're doing in the future. Have a great week, and I hope you stay safe.